Welcome to IPFS weekly call for the 24th of February 2020. Yeah, uh, time flies. Uh, so this week we got lightning talks. I will quickly paste link to, to meeting notes uh, on the Zoom chat. Please uh, add yourself to attendees list. And if you've got a lightning talk, you can, we probably have this some space at the end uh, we got some uh, talks already but if you have something that you can squeeze under like five minutes uh, please feel free to add to the list um, can I have a note taker whoever will blink first thank you Dietrich for volunteering <laughs> awesome all right, I think admin is done from uh, my end. Molly, do you have any like loud, quick announcements? Um, no, none off the top of my head. It's gonna be an exciting week. Welcome back, everybody. Good seeing you again. Cool. All right. Uh, I guess, Molly, do you want to start with your uh, demos? Sounds good. Which one did I put first, Audius or Decentraland? Oh, up to you. Okay, cool. Well, then let's let's do Decentraland since I happen to be. I've prepared my demos. All right. Um, share screen. Thank you. Do so. Yeah, I spent a little bit of time this weekend exploring the new decentralized metaverse, um, and one of those things was uh, was going and figuring out. What, what you can do in Decentraland. So I have a little, a little avatar human and they can wander around this decentral world, mostly by pressing W. Um, w means you walk forward. And there's all this stuff, which has all been created by different humans. A lot of which you can look at and wonder what it does. Sometimes there's little plaques. Sorry, it's kind of jittery. Um, probably because I'm running both, both Zoom and Central end at the same time. It will make your computer very warm. Cool. There's something about Ethereum with plasma and something you can type go to next in the chat window. Okay, cool. Um, you can go and wander around in here. There's like lasers and creatures and other fun and games, battle racers. You guys probably can't hear this, but it is now playing localized theme music in my headphones so like where when you wander around the space where the music is playing changes according to your headphones which is pretty fun um yeah and surprisingly easy to get set up um you need to install metamask but other than that you don't actually have to load in crypto unless you want to uh save your your username or anything like that and every now and then, I don't have a, an example in here, I don't think, but there's something that you can interact with and then you can just click on it and it maybe, maybe it does something. So yeah, the central land demo, we should all go hang out. You do see other people's avatars and so we can literally use this for a digital virtual meetup so we can all chicken dance. Um, so those are, those are the, the ways we might be able to use it so far, continuing to investigate how we might use it for for IPFS meetups in the wild. All right, um, oh, and then when I want to exit, I press return. Next demo, Audius. Start listening. Uh, Molly, uh, there are oh. questions on the chat. Oh, okay. Questions about lightning talks. Is it VR or just screen? Um, I have just been using it on, on computer and mobile. It does work on a mobile web page, which was surprising to me. Um, I have not tried to hook it up to a headset so far. Um, I bet they have support for some, some things like that, but I think probably starting with the web page model was easiest. Um, have you encountered Baby Yoda? I have not. Uh, if he exists in here, I've, I've, uh, there is kind of usefully, you can like just, what is it, Decentraland map. Um, they have like somewhere in here. They definitely do have like maps, this Decentraland map, um, where you can then like click on them, I think this thing, and you can then teleport to specific locations based on clicking on the map. So if you want to find something in particular, you can use 
use these maps to go and find a particular thing, which is useful. So like raft ride, tomb chaser, space station, and then it'll teleport you to the right part of Decentraland. Oh, log in there. Cool. Any other Second Life flashbacks? Yeah, I think uh, I think along those lines for sure. Cool, that was my very short Decentraland demo. The other one is Audius, which is super cool, which is now my music player of choice. Mostly I just keep listening to the same pop mix of Into the Unknown from Frozen 2, just over and over and over and over again. But when wandering around Brooklyn and seemingly I have terrible service anywhere in New York, um, Audius was loading for me when Spotify wasn't, which was very exciting. But I guess we can, oh, if I play this, you guys won't be able to hear it. Um, Quite exciting, and I find, well, I guess it probably could just go in here, but this is this is my new favorite pop mix, um, which has Adina Menzel and Aurora, whatever that is. Maybe it's the Aurora. Um, and now I'm playing very loud pop music to myself. Um, anyways, but you can, I guess, repost it, you can favorite it, um, and you can even remix it, and then create your own remix, and add it to Audius, and do all this cool stuff. So um, do, do recommend it as a, a way to explore, especially if you're into like lo-fi, um, like electronic music. There's a ton of stuff on here from like original creators who are doing fascinating mashups and um, the pop mix is, is kind of where I'm, I'm hanging out for now. But yay for IPFS powered tools and other fun stuff. Is that JS IPFS? Oh boy. Um, how is Audius set up? I'm not certain. It's definitely not running. I'm not running desktop at the moment because my desktop keeps crashing. Okay. It, for more information, you can watch a previous IPFS weekly where they talk about their architecture. I'll awesome. drop that link in the notes. Then we'll leave it as a I think it's a mixed Let's apologies. There's three different. Awesome. All right, those are my demos. Thank you, Mari. It's awesome. Uh, and in so, if someone like missed, uh, Audius has uh, both web and mobile versions. So it's and mobile versions really, really slick and nice. So uh, make sure to check it out. Uh, thank you, Mari. Uh, quickly throwing Mike back to Hugo to tell us about Playwright Test. Quick demo, Hugo. Like five yeah. minutes. Okay, we're gonna be faster than last time. Hopefully, I learned some lessons. Uh, so yeah, uh, a new runner uh, for browser tests. Uh, I've been trying to to do this stuff for a long time, and now finally, in the, in the last couple of weeks, I was I managed to uh, prototype something, and it's working pretty well. Basically, I'm maintaining the, the IPFS toolchain, at least for JS. So this is where that comes from. Azure does a bunch of things, the builds, links, tests, releases, everything. But it needs some browser love. And specifically, because we are uh, trying to focus more in the browser use case. And for the test, we, we were using Karma, which has a it works, but it has some issues. So I needed something better with some new tools that came up. So, uh, and most specifically, I wanted to give uh, the core for some of the contributors the same experience they have from running stuff in Node.js, like running Mocha or any other test runner. I wanted to give them the same experience um, in the browser, running that same stuff in the browser. So from those objectives, Play right test came out, uh, and I'm going to change here so I can show you some examples. So basically, this works as any other runner. You basically uh, give it the um, the tests. This one is the default one. It basically defaults to running uh, um, using Mocha, and it's as simple as that. Set up the browser, bundles the test, sends it to the browser, and the output comes out. And as you can see, there's something wrong here. And I will explain uh, shortly. So 
we have uh, different ways to run the, uh, the test in the browser. Um, we can just give it the debug flag. This basically keeps the browser open, opens the dev tools, and you can see stuff here. You can debug, debug inside the dev tools. You can also, uh, you may want to run your tests inside a worker instead of the main thread, and you can do that. You just send it mode equal to worker. Or you can also, you may want to run your test inside incognito, uh, in an incognito window, and you can also do that. And this is a new feature that we couldn't do with Karma, so that's some value here. And another interesting thing is you can run it inside an extension environment, which is pretty cool. So we can test like IPFS companion and stuff like that. And yeah, as you see, that error was basically saying that the variable Chrome is not, was not available. And now that I ran inside the extension environment, the Chrome variable is already uh, defined with all this stuff. It's basically because these are Chrome specific APIs that are only available inside an extension. So basically, I just proved that it actually ran inside the environment of an extension. Uh, another interesting, interesting thing that was pretty troublesome to do was to run um, benchmarks. Basically, the only uh, library that we use for benchmarks in JS land is benchmarks.js, which is a pretty old thing, but it's pretty stable. Everyone uses it. But to be used inside of a browser, it's pretty troublesome to set up. But now you can just use some mocks that I have here, say that the runner is benchmark, and everything is done for you, and you just get your output straight away in the terminal. It takes a little bit because it's running some iterations of the, of the suits. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. If you want to see an example of what I just ran, it's basically this. It uses basically exactly the same API as benchmark.js. I just do a little wrapper around it, just so I know when the benchmark ends. Uh, but everything else is uh, exactly uh, as you would do in Node. Um, one more, th one last thing is the um, the extra stuff. Um, sometimes uh, you want to run um, something before your tests, like uh, for our use case would be something like testing the WebRTC direct from libpgp. You want to set up one tab with one, one WebRTC direct and you want to connect to another tab. Uh, right now, we will, what we would do is we would set up something in Node and then we would run in the browser and connect to Node. But uh, that's not, uh, sometimes that's not the, the, um, the environment we want. We actually want two tabs connect to each other. And we couldn't do that until now. But now we can actually do it. And we show you, I'm gonna run, not this one. It seems to run the benchmarks. So if you run it, you get an error. Yeah, but trust me, it works. I'm doing something wrong that I'm not seeing right now. But yeah, I think that's mostly it. Uh, let me see if I didn't forget anything. You can run it in all three browsers, main browsers, right? That right now. Uh, and there's one mode that I want to add in the future, which is basically the the service worker mode. Uh, so we would have main thread worker and service worker. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. And one runner that will probably uh, exist in the near future would be a runner so we can integrate all this in test ground and run test plans for JS stuff. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Can't wait for support.
of extensions in Firefox, because right now it's just Chrome only, but it's still very useful to be able to run tests uh, in actual runtime instead of like pretending it's there. Yeah. Uh, I just check with the Playwright guys that's on the V1 roadmap and also I'm getting back the auto opening of the dev tools for a web extensions. It's also in the, in the roadmap. So you're going to get all that stuff. Awesome. Sure. Hopefully. It's not in my hands, so I can only hope. Cool. Um, Eddie. All right, guys, uh, unless there are any questions to Hugo, uh, I go with the next demo. Yes, hello, guys. Okay, so uh, everybody can see my screen, okay? Yes. Excellent. So what I'm going to be showing here is a tool that you cannot get from anywhere right now. Uh, tune in for another uh, installment somewhere in a Monday in the middle of March. We'll announce this separately where this tool will be shipped properly. Uh, but basically what this is about. So uh, uh, let's say we have our GoIPFS uh, latest release. Uh, we simply decompress it and we pipe it into regular IPFS. Uh, this should be familiar to everybody. We get a hash back. Now, uh, we actually need to work with the newer hashes uh, of CIDV1. So we're going to say a great CIDV0 in output, which will give us, which will give us, yes, which will give us the hash under which this, uh, basically is the same CIDV0 hash, but represented as base 32. Now, if we do the same, very same thing, with this new tool and give it um, the IPFS command that we just used, uh, which is add a great CD disturbing output, we get the same hash, uh, 7w6x4, or 7w64. So it is uh, completely convergent with GoIPFS itself. But it gives you a ton of interesting data about this. So uh, it tells you how big the stream was, uh, how big is the actual DAG that it is forming out of this, so, so the logical deck without any duplication. It tells you how many uh, data blocks it has, how many links it has, uh, how much this is, how much bigger or smaller it is from the stuff that you piped in. And it also gives you a breakdown of the tree. So L0 is the uh, bottom most, so those are the leaf nodes. Uh, and the 5 percentile are that big, the 5th percentile are that big. So you basically have a very good view of how um, your data lays into IPFS. Uh, now, uh, there are more things that you can do with that. So here is what is in my data IPFS directory. There are actually three uh, versions of IPFS available. Now, if we go ahead and take all the files in the directory and pull them through uh, something that basically just unzips them, so strips the GZ, just pipes in the bare tars in, and prefixes each tar with the size of the stream that is follow, and then we say here that we expect a multipart of the input, we're going to get something like this. Now, this is our first stream the original uh, uh, CID that we got from earlier, you can see it right here, right? But the other two TARS are also in here, and it shows you what this would be. All, uh, almost nine megabytes uh, of data, how they are formed into one large DAG with three roots. And again, we can see that there are actually no duplications here at all because 42 is 36 plus 6. So everything just went into the data store as is. And you can see that now your DAG has further depth. Uh, the sizes and sounds uh, are a little bit different. It just gives you a, a, a perfect idea of what everything to look at in the data store without actually needing a data store without putting anything in. You just pipe stuff into the tool. Now, the best part is that, and the reason this tool exists, is to be able to quantify what does it, what do you gain by using different uh, chunking techniques, different linking techniques, uh, and how all of this will affect this number. So, what we're going to do, we're going to run the very same command, but we are going to add, uh, this is not actually an option that will be there in the final version, 
But just to give you an idea what this is, this is uh, uh, finding repeated random bytes. So if we have 32 no bytes or more or spaces or more, it will take it as an additional cut point in addition to any other check that it plays. And the result of this is this. So we have the DAG is much larger than it was before, but because we cut at much smarter places, our actual duplication of this goes down to three megabytes as opposed to eight megabytes. And because we have more blocks to link, we have uh, 15,000 nodes versus only 42 nodes. Obviously, it costs more to uh, link them. We need 94 link blocks as opposed to six. So this is a little bit larger, but at the end, this all adds up to only four megabytes in your data store as opposed to almost 9 megabytes in your data store. And of course, again, your tag is larger and it has different distributions and things like that. Uh, and this is the gist of what this tool does. It uh, obviously has a huge, uh, oops. It has a huge uh, help uh, uh, list. In fact, uh, it has an even larger help list. <laughs> and this is not, not actually the final version of it. But again, tune in in about two or three months from now, and we'll have an entire half hour talking about uh, what actually happens inside this tool and what our uh, research on chunking and you know, our discoveries on how to better fit data uh, into your data store as yes, chemicals. And that's all I have. Any questions? Awesome. Can't wait for this to be an actual thing that community can start like playing and experimenting. Absolutely. Awesome. We we'll for sure uh, have a longer uh, longer uh, IPFS weekly dedicated just uh, to that. Uh, cool. I don't think we have any specific questions. Uh, let's move to the next demo. We are running out of time. Uh, Alan? Yeah, would you like to choose a demo or do you have a preference? I have two uh, in, in maybe mind. Let Maybe let's uh, start with quick, and okay. the, we can do the next, uh, the remaining ones uh, in like four or five weeks on the next session okay. of Lightning. Talk. Sounds good. Quick is nice and okay. quick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's see if I can share my screen. How does it even work? Uh, let's just do that desktop. That'll do. Yeah, sweet. Okay. Um, get out of the way. Uh, okay, cool. This is a quick talk I gave at the recent IPFS team week. So I haven't changed the icons or anything. <laughs> uh, but here we are. Um, JS libp to p quick. Can everyone see, first of all, what I'm showing in, on my screen? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, donk. <laughs> okay, quick. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. What is Quick? Uh, Quick is a uh, UDP-based transport. It's still a draft, it's not finished. Um, it's UDP, but it has the guarantees of TCP. Um, and it also has TLS built in. One important part about Quick is that it allows for out-of-order packets, um, and that eliminates the uh, head-of-line blocking problem uh, that we find with HTTP, HTTP2. Um, there is a implementation of Quick in Node.js. It's being developed right now as we speak. It is being developed by James Snell, uh, and that is the URL to the fork of Node.js where it's being developed. Um, it is being sponsored by Protocol Labs and Nearform, so that's super awesome. Uh, there is, if you're interested in this at all, uh, which you should be because it's super exciting, um, then go and read the blog post. There was a recent blog post by James, uh, and it's a really good explainer of what's, what's coming, what's there, uh, and what to expect, um, and what problems it solves. So um, go and check a look at that. Anyway, though, lip to p quick in JS. Whoa, can it be a reality? Well, let me tell you, I have not made much progress, but <laughs> uh, it's underway. Uh, I, what I did was I, uh, I cloned the Node.js quick 
uh, repo. I figured out how to compile Node uh, with Quick enabled, which was um, more difficult than it probably should have been. Uh, but all I needed to do was add a flag. And unfortunately, at the time, I think it's been documented now, but there was no documentation. I was just like, where is the Quick? I can't find it. Um, but Anyway, I got it working, um, and then uh, I managed to like knock up a really quick transport um, and uh, a libp2p transport um, in JavaScript, uh, and it is, uh, and you can see here that it listens on a port, um, and I got, I've got two transports that I uh, that I get to connect to each other, and uh, they just send a quick uh, a quick hello world to each other, which is super cool. Um, the interesting part about this is that they are connecting using TLS certs that I found in the Node.js repo. Uh, I, that's okay. I think, I do believe that they know that they are there and they are for testing, so that's fine. Um, but the next part of this was to create a way for, because we don't, we're not going to use the uh, Node.js testing certs in production. Um, what we're going to do is create a uh, change a peer ID, our own peer ID, uh, into a certificate. And so what I started on was doing that conversion. Um, so I've got a, a, a function that takes a, a libp 2 peer ID um, and it converts it into a certificate. And the kind of interesting part about this uh, is that, uh, so this screenshot just shows this certificate that I uh, I'd already saved out and uh, I, I read it in with OpenSSL and it seems to be valid. So, uh, so it looks like it's working. Um, and so the interesting part of this is that uh, when I was doing this, that, well, I found it interesting. You probably don't find it very interesting, but I found that this, they've got this OID um, uh, thing and they, they've got extensions to the to certificates that you can add and if you plug that number into this 1990s website then you get look protocol labs look it's Raul uh, and so I found that interesting um, he's just there <laughs> um, so that's that next step is to uh, is the other side of that where we take a, a certificate and then get a peer ID from it um, so We'll get there eventually, but that's about as far as I've come. Uh, and uh, if you are interested in it, then go and check out this repo. It's at um, uh, github.com, Alan Shaw, forward slash JS Lib Peter be quick. Um, go and like open an issue, or if you want to help out, then, then send a PR or something. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to try and work on it in, in my spare time. As I said, I've not had a lot recently, so it's been a bit slow, but in the future, uh, quick for JS, um, and I think that would be really cool because, uh, well, firstly, one thing that I thought would be cool, which might be faster, is that we do a lot um, like multiplexing, and we do it in JS land, whereas in Quick, multiplexing is built in. Uh, so you can, so hopefully or probably, uh, multiplexing in C land in Quick might be a little bit faster than it is uh, in raw JS. So we're, we're yet to see if that's a, that's going to be a good thing or not. But um, I thought that would be interesting to find out at least. So that's Libby to be quick. That's as far as it's got. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for listening. Awesome. Thank you so much for being so quick. Uh, however, there will be even quicker uh, demo slash lightning talk from Dietrich. You got quarter of a minute. Uh, I'll do it the next time. <laughs> that was fast. Doing it in a negative time. Time has started rolling backwards. Cool. All right. Uh, we will continue in four weeks with lightning talks or five weeks. Uh, next week, we are back to reg regular schedule. I believe we got, uh, we will be listening about Fury updates. So Alan is uh, our new host starting next week. What? Uh, I'm saying goodbye. I mean, yes, next yes. <laughs> I'm, say I'm saying goodbye. Uh, thank you all oh, for I participating bye -bye. and coping with me. Now you know. Bye. <laughs>